kids. Welcome to Sunday School. I'm so glad you could join me here online. Well, I know things are a little bit different because we're all doing church at home right now. We can still get together and learn about God and the Bible, and I think that's great. Let's begin today by practicing one of our memory verses from this unit. This verse is Psalm 8, 3 through 4. It says, when I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Let's practice this verse together. I'll say a part, and then you will copy me by echoing that part back to me. I will say Psalm 8, 3 through 4, and you will say, good job. When I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Great job. You can practice this verse and our other memory verse for this unit for the next eight weeks so that you'll have both of them hidden in your heart by the end of this unit. I have posted some videos on Facebook. If your family would like to show you those videos, you could watch them and learn motions and songs that help you learn these verses by the end of the unit. Now let's review what you learned in the last lesson that was sent home to you for Sunday school a few weeks ago. You learned the seven C's of history. Let's review what those are. The first one is creation. That's when everything was created by the power of God's word. The next one, corruption. That's when sin entered God's very good creation. The third one is catastrophe. That's when a global flood brought judgment to the wicked world. Number four, confusion. That's when God judged sin by confusing the common language. Number five, Christ. That's when the creator and son of God came to earth as a man. Number six, cross. That's when Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was the perfect sacrifice for sin. And the last C, consummation. That's just a fancy word that means God promises a new heaven and a new earth for all believers. Today, we're going to focus on the first C, which is creation. That's right. Now, to get us thinking about creation, let's all think of something from God's creation that begins with the first letter of our first name. We'll say it in a sentence like this. My name is and God created. Now I'll go first. My name is Nicole, and God created narwhals. Now it's your turn. You're going to say the sentence on the count of three. My name is blank, and God created blank, but you're filling the blanks with a, your name, and then a theme from creation that begins with the first letter of your first name. Are you ready? One, two, three. Great job, everybody. You thought of some great things from God's creation. Now, let's look at what God's word says about creation. We're gonna begin by reading in Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible where creation happens. We're gonna start with Genesis 1.1. So if you have a Bible there with you, which I hope you do, you can turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And it says this. I'm going to have to put on my glasses for this part because my Bible has little tiny writing. All right, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. According to this verse, who created the heavens and the earth? That's right, God. And when did he create them? In the beginning. That's right. It was the very beginning of time. Nothing existed before this except God. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. It says, And then God said, Let there be light. 
and there was light. So what did God create first? Light, that's right. And how did he create it? He just said the words, he spoke. Let there be light. Think about that, how powerful our God must be that all he had to do was speak and it happened, there was light. The Bible says that God separated the light from the darkness. Let's read Genesis 1, 5. Genesis 1, 5 says this. So God called the light day and the darkness night. And a evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. What did God call the light and the dark? That's right, he called the light day and the dark night. So on the first day, God created the first daytime and the first nighttime. I want you to notice that he hasn't created the sun yet. Light was actually created before the sun. Isn't that interesting? Now, I gave your parents an email, I sent them an email, with some notes and asked them to print them for you. Hopefully you have these. If you don't, don't worry about it. You can print them later and fill in the blanks. But we're going to fill them in as we go through the lesson. So if you want to do that with me, you can look at the first part of your notes where it says day one. It says, God said, let there be light. He separated the light from the darkness. This was the first blank and night. We'll put the word in there, day, right? D-A-Y, the first day and night. And your first part of your notes is complete. Let's move on to day two. We're going to read Genesis 1-6. In Genesis 1-6, it says this, Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. What did God create on day two? A space between the waters. Now there was a lot of water at first when God created the space between the waters above and the waters below. We usually call this space the sky or the atmosphere. If you take a deep breath like this, it'll remind you that the atmosphere is full of air that we need. God knew that we would need air to live, didn't he? Now, how did God make this space between the waters that's full of air for us to breathe? He spoke. That's all he had to do, and it happened. So on day two, God created the atmosphere and the sky. Let's look at our notes and fill those in. On day two, it says God created the blank and the blank we breathe. So you can say God created the sky and spell it S-K-Y. Or you can use the big word atmosphere if you want to. If you want to write atmosphere, it is spelled A-T-M-O-S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. And the air we breathe. Air is A-I-R. Okay, so you have the first whole page of your notes filled in. We're going to move on to day three, when we're going to read two verses together, Genesis 1, verses 9 and 10. So right here, I can turn the page. It says, Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas. And God saw that it was good. So God gathered the waters and what happened when he did? Land, that's right. And what did God call the dry land? Well, we call it earth or land, right? And what were the waters called? Seas, that's right. And how did God do all of this? He spoke. That's all he had to do was just say it, and it happened. Let's read Genesis 1.11. Genesis 1.11 says this. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. So when God made the land on day three, he wasn't finished yet. What did he make come up out of the earth? That's right, vegetation, plants, and trees. 
Now, plants can be tricky to grow. I know. My family actually makes fun of me because when I get a new plant, I usually kill it very quickly. But for God, this wasn't hard at all. All he had to do was speak, and the plants and trees, all the vegetation just came right up out of the land. Now, can you think of some types of plants and trees? On the count of three, let's all say two kinds of plants or trees. Are you ready? One, two, three. Strawberries and pear trees. I guess I must be hungry because I'm thinking of fruit-bearing plants. Good job, guys. You thought of lots of good things that God has created. It's time for us to fill in our notes for day three, so let's get those notes. It says, God created the land and all the blank that grow out of it. You can put the word plants or the word vegetation if you like that bigger word better. If you want to write plants, it's P-L-A-N-T-S. And if you want to write vegetation, it's V-E-G-E-T-A-T-I-O-N. All right, it's time for us to move on to day four of God's creation. What do you think God created on day four? Mm, let's find out. We're going to read Genesis 1.16, okay? Genesis 1.16 says, God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. So the Bible says he created two big lights in the sky. It says the greater one rules the day. What would that be? The sun. That's right. It says the lesser one would rule the night. What would that be? That's right. It would be the moon. What else did God put in the sky? The stars. That's right. So we need to fill in our notes right here. Let's look at day four. It says God created the greater light to rule the day. It is the Sun, so right, S-U-N. Then it says the lesser light to rule the night. It is the moon, right, moon, M-O-O-N. And then the last one, all the blink, he spoke and they appeared. Stars, S-T-A-R-S. -S. And your second page of notes is complete. Wow, God created a lot of things in the first four days, didn't he? He made the light, the sky, the air, the land, the plants, everything we see in the sky during the day and the night, like the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. Whew, all this was not hard work for God, though. He just spoke it, and it suddenly existed. His power is greater than we can even imagine. This was the very beginning. Before God created all this universe, it was only God, nothing else. He made a beautiful place in the first four days of creation. That's because he was getting ready for what he was going to create next. Let's discover what that was by reading Genesis 1.20. Genesis 1.20 says, Then God said, Let the water swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So what did God create on day five? That's right. The birds and the animals of the air and the fish and the sea creatures of the sea. Let's each think of one kind of bird and one kind of sea creature. We're going to say them together on the cone of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Seagulls and crabs. You can tell I used to live by the ocean before I moved here to Idaho. You guys did a great job. You thought of some wonderful creation, amazing things that God has created. He's so powerful and creative, isn't he? I just get amazed. All right, let's fill in our notes for day five. It says God created sea creatures to fill the, the seas, right? S-E-A-S. -E and B, flying creatures to fly above the earth and fill the air, right? A-I-R. This is flying creatures because not all things that fly are birds, right? Like bats, they're not birds, but they fly in the sky. All right, we're ready to move on to day six of creation. Let's learn what God created on day six by reading Genesis 1, 24. So Genesis 1, 
verse 24, says, Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock and small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. So God created more living creatures. What kind of creatures did he create on day six? That's right. He made livestock. He created small animals that scurry on the ground. Some versions say creeping animals and wild animals. He created all of the land animals on day six. Can you think of any land animals? Let's say them together on the count of three. Just think of two of them, okay? One, two, three. Cows and pigs. You can tell I've been around farms, I guess. All right, good job. I'm sure you thought of some great land animals that God created. Now, how did God create these amazing animals? He spoke, right? He just said, let there be land animals, and there was land animals. It, he wasn't done on day six, though. He had one more very special creation planned for day six. Let's read Genesis 1.27 and see what that is. Genesis 1.27, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So according to this verse, how did God create man? That's right, in his own image. What do you think that means? It means that we are created different than animals. Because we're created in God's image, we're special. We can think, we can love others, we can know right from wrong, we can be creative, and most importantly, we can have a relationship with God. Adam and Eve were the very first people, and all people created after them were created in the image of God, including you and me. Let's fill in our day six notes. It says God created the land animals, right? A-N-I-M-A-L-S and blank who are the only ones created in God Im God's image. What should we write there? How about instead of writing man, because that might be confusing because he made a man and a woman, right? So let's put the word mankind. M-A-N-K-I-N-D. All right, we have one day left in our story of the creation, and that is day seven. We're gonna look at the second book of the Bible, Exodus, and we're going to look in Exodus 20, verse 11, to find out what happened on day 7. So let me turn over here to, it goes Genesis, then Exodus, in your Bible, to Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to look at verse 11. Okay, Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, says this, For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. How many days did it take for God to create? Just six, right? And what does it say God did on the seventh day? That's right. It says he rested. Hmm, that's funny. You think that God got tired? You think he just wore himself out creating on six days? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I know he wasn't tired because one of God's attributes is that he's all-powerful. A fancy word that means all-powerful is omnipotent. Can you say omnipotent? Good job. That word means all-powerful. He is so powerful, all he had to do was speak and things came into existence. That's almost too powerful for us to even imagine. That is why he is worthy of our praise and our worship. We honor him because he is a God who never needs rest. So why did he rest? He rested on the seventh day to set an example for you and for me. He knew that human beings would need rest. They would need one day each week where they could spend time praying and worshiping him to get ready for all the work they would have to do the next week. He set a pattern for us so that we would rest one day every week. So let's look at our notes and fill them in for day seven and the bottom part two here about the word omnipotent. It says, 
and then God rested. God rested. He wanted us to know that we would need a day to blink and worship him. We need to put the word rest in there. R-E-S-T. And look at the bottom. There's that big fancy word that means all powerful. Omnipotent. God is omnipotent. He is, and then we'll write all powerful. So all is A-L-L. -L, then there's a dash. Powerful. P-O-W-E-R-F-U-L. All your notes filled in now. That's really good. All right, so isn't our omnipotent God awesome? He created the universe and everything in six days, just by simply speaking. He created man in his own image, and he even set an example for us by resting on the seventh day. What a mighty God we serve. You think we should stop and thank him for his amazing creation? Let's do that. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this Bible story lesson. Lord, we thank you that you made creation. We thank you that you're all powerful. We thank you that we can worship you and praise you because you're such an amazing creator with such a greater imagination than we can even wrap our heads around. You are awesome and we love you. Thank you for making this wonderful universe for us. We are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're coming close to the end of our lesson, but I have a couple more things for you to do. Since we can't get together and play a review game in our classroom, I've attached a video that you're just about to watch. It's only about three minutes long, and it reviews what we just learned. Right after that, there's going to be another video. It's a little bit longer, about 12 minutes, but I saved the best for last. It's a super fun video about creation versus evolution, and I think you're really going to like it. So you go watch those two videos and then meet me right back here so that we can wrap up today's lesson for Sunday School. See you in a few minutes. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so, and the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and birds that may fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of heaven. 
And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature after its kind, livestock and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Like adventure, then join our team exploring mysteries few have seen. Get your hiking boots and your backpack too. Join us in our search for truth. Where we pedal down a cliff or take a kayak ride. Crawl deep in a cave and see what's inside. We're out exploring to clear the doubt. The Discovery Team is out and about. We're out exploring to clear the doubt. The Discovery Team is out and about. The Creation Adventure Team. Six short days, one big adventure. ABCQ, now online. I can't believe I made this. I am a genius. Wow. Look how big these blades of grass are. Grass, day three. Where am I? Dirt, day three. Spider, ew. Day six. This thing is huge! Grasshopper, day six. Whoa. This thing is fantastic! great! Hey, buddy! More Run up! Turns and I should the ABC have. camp! It works! What? Yeah! I took a remote control camera and a piece of used bubble gum. I like to call this one already been chewed cam. Oh, come on. That's disgusting! But very cool. Okay, that should do it. Looks like we're ready. Just how did life begin? It's been said that we are the result of an explosion. Is this true? Is this scientific? Or is it just based on a belief? On a belief. Danger, intruder, approaching. Danger, Danger. Buddy. Oh, hey, Hi. Alec. Hi, Evan. I need to start. I got it right here. I didn't think you Thank were coming. You. Ivan, I need to be our... Thanks. Oh, Alec, be careful. And whatever you don't do, don't let it get away. How important they are. Oh, Alec, oh, watch out for the... Danger, intruder, approaching. Oh, danger, of oh, no. no. Squashing. Oh, no. Danger, of Squashing. Danger, of no. Alec, squash. Oh, great! Yay! Fantastic! Bad!
About 15 billion years ago, there was only matter and energy. It was just floating out in outer space, and it was... Whoops. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Little... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ow! Can you hurry it up? I'm sorry. That's enough. Continue, please. ABC Camp, now online. Hey, you're still alive! Anyways, before I was interrupted, Alec... I hope the camera controls up to the helmet. Sit back and relax. It's movie time. Then somehow, who knows how or why, it was compacted in this teeny tiny little speck about the size of a period on this page. It was so full of energy, it made a bang. Big Bang! Whoa! Oh, man. And then after millions of years of evolution and fish and bugs and hairy apes, we all just kind of got here. I'm done. Pretty impressive for a little speck. Thank you very much, Tara. Let's encourage her, please. All right, I believe it is Alex's turn. If you would come up and give us your science report. Okay, guys, listen up. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> what a cool Um, My report is on how God created the world in six actual days and not million and billions of years. What? Well, it's true. That's what... Six times? Like, that could actually like, happen. I mean... Oh, come on, don't listen to them. I thought this was supposed to be a science project. It must be Tara. Yeah, good one. Yeah, good. Point. Good point. And it is to be a science project. And may I remind the class that a science project and science itself cannot be based upon blind faith. It has to be based upon three things. Scientific fact is based upon three things. What are they? Observable, Capturing. testable, and together, and repeatable. repeatable. Thank you. Remember that any event that is not observable, testable, and repeatable is not a fact. It's a theory. Exactly, but some theories are just more valid than others. And I would agree with that. What? Yeah, well, um, where is it? It's is there so something brave. wrong? Give me the glasses. Oh, no, no, here they Give are. Give me the glasses. Give me the glasses. Here, try these on. What are these for? They're biblical reality glasses. They'll help you see things the way they really are. I really don't think these are necessary. Oh, it's necessary. Well, go ahead, try them. It's part of my presentation. I have enough to, for the whole class. Just try them on, they'll really That's help. That's this one. Here, take one. Come on, just put them on. They'll off. really help. Initiating VR. Uploading to VR. Creation. Mankind. Created on the six. How do these things work? They're not incredible. This is a limited. Finally! Now it's time to show them what it's all about. There's words in there? Just how did life begin? It's been said that we are the result of an explosion. Is this true? Is this scientific? Or is it just based on a belief? This is pretty cool. What? Wow. Was it an explosion? Did we come from a glob of goo? Ugh. Ugh. Yuck. I don't think so. Some scientists tell us that we evolved from chemicals over millions of years. That were the result of random chance, the survival of the fittest. And some people present this as fact. But is this valid? Is it anything more than just a belief? Many say that we have no real purpose, and there's no God to answer to. But that's not true. The Bible says that in the beginning we were designed by a loving and an intelligent creator with a plan and a purpose. That purpose is to know and enjoy him. 
So how can creation and evolution be so different? Think about it. We all live in the present. We have the same Earth, same animals, same stars, same evidence. Now look, the facts are all the same. The facts are all the same. But we start with different beliefs about the past. Evolution teaches that we're the result of millions and millions of years of death. Disease and struggle. And the dinosaurs died off long before man ever even evolved. Now, biblical creation, on the other hand, shows us that originally everything was created in just six days. That's right, six. You can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. But that original creation changed because of something that happened in our history. Something that still affects us even today. Eat this and you will be like God. <laughs> I tricked her. Yeah, that was truly the saddest event in the history of the universe. Hello? What does this have to do with science? Well, first you have to know what science is. See, the study of origins like how the Earth was made. That's not science. It's not science. It's just a belief. Just a belief. Some theories are just more valid than others. Since we can't observe the origin of the universe, and history can't be repeated, science is basically forced into guessing how the evidence got there. See, history cannot be observable, testable, or repeatable. Or repeatable. So what is science? And what is a belief? Uploading to VR. Remember that any event that is not observable, testable, and repeatable is not See, a science gives us great things like medicine and hot air balloons, electricity, <laughs> and even the space shuttle. Uh, don't forget the robotic dinosaurs. And fat-free junk food! And fat-free junk food! And fat-free junk food! <laughs> All of these are achieved by doing experiments in the present, analyzing what happened, and then doing more experiments! <laughs> to test those ideas. None of these conflict with God's word. In fact, did you know that the Bible will accurately describe a number of scientific facts way before modern science even discovered them? Way before. Uh, such as, uh, you know, that uh, your uh, Earth is round and uh, hangs on nothing. The uh, ocean currents, uh, commonly called the uh, paths of the seas in the Bible. And uh, hygiene. Oh, hygiene. See... Everything has a tendency to go from order <laughs> to disorder and not the other way around like evolution teaches. But God, who knows everything, wrote the events of creation down for us in the Bible. It's the history book of the universe. It's uh, his story, get it? See, evolution has no real answer for where matter and energy came from <laughs> in the first place. Now, I hope you enjoyed those videos. Thanks again for joining me for Sunday School Online. I've attached some fun things for you in an email that I sent to your family. There's a take home page that they can print that looks like this. I've also attached the Justin and Jesse story, some coloring sheets that go with the lesson, as well as some flashcards that you can even use to help you learn the books of the Bible in order if you don't already know them. Those things were all sent in an email that your family can print and help you with. So I hope they'll do that and you can enjoy those things this week. I hope you have a great week and I will see you next week for Sunday School Online.